and sixth place. Two Kenyans, two Ethiopians, one Moroccan and one Portuguese. Been a fine run by Cohen, really gutsy. But he's in the worst place, Coet. He's in the lead and they're queuing up behind him. The two former world record holders are side by side. Gebri Selassie and Salah Hissou. Paul Turgut surprisingly hasn't made a move yet as they now come down with two laps to go in the men's 10,000 meters. Someone surely will make an early move. Will they all wait for the last 400? It's doubtful. Gabriel Selassie moves dangerously to the leader's shoulder. What he's doing is running a slightly wide there to block anyone coming from the back. Somebody's got to go a long way round. Hisu follows. Turgat made no move at all, but Castro's right with these with a lap and a half left. The other man is Mezigibu in sixth place, only 19. And there goes Gebri Selassie. Well, he doesn't need to. He didn't need to go that early. But look at that acceleration. He's closing him away in the course of 50 meters. And now the reigning champion is on his way. He can see he wants to go. Hear the music of the bell. Turgot's gone second. Here's your third. But Gebri Selassie too good. The break was decisive. Even when he took the first 10 strides, they weren't prepared to go with him. They couldn't go with him anyway. He's full of running. Absolutely flying away from them. And even though they're chasing hard, they're not catching him. Turgut is in second place and his two third. Fourth is the long-time leader, Coet. 200 left. This, a majestic last lap. Really for the Ethiopian, a lap of honour. He's won this so nicely. Turgut is closing, but he'll never catch him. So, Gabriel Selassie wins for the third time in succession the World Championship at 10,000 meters. Turgut is second. Hissu is third. Goetz is fourth. Messi Gugo, five. And Castro in sixth place. 33, the Portuguese. A really gallant try. Well, that's amazing. However the race was going to be run, Gebri Selassie, the world record holder, the reigning champion, was certainly going to be the one to beat. And I think if they'd run faster, he would have won it. If they'd run slower, he would have won it. But the key to the race for Gebri Selassie was actually when he made the burst. Let's have a look at that now. And what a burst it was. He went past like a sprinter. There was no answer to that. Look at him. To say it was decisive is an understatement. Look at that. He's got 24 laps in his legs at this stage. You can see the one lap to go marker. A superb piece of timing and running. And in that short burst, he actually was further ahead of Paul Turgat than he was at the finish of the race. So look at Gabriel Selassie flying down the back straight. What a fantastic athlete he is. Any way the race was going to be run, he was going to win this race. And the amazing thing to me was that it was exactly the same positions as they finished in the Olympic Games last year. Gebri Selassie in first place, 200 meters to go, being chased by Turgut, who, if anything, was closing down slightly on Gebri Selassie. And I think this was a victory for tactical awareness by Gebri Selassie. He moved there, and if you think about it, he was further ahead, a lap to go when he burst away than he is at this point. Turgat's coming back at him. He's certainly closing down. He's never going to catch him. There's no way they're going to catch him. But Gebri Selesi, the reigning champion, wins again. Turgat in second place, and then Salah Hissou in third place. And that's exactly the way it seems to be these days. Well, although Turgat was catching him, believe it or not, Gebri Selesi ran 56 seconds for the last lap. So what did uh, Turgat do? And Gebri Selesi ran 69 for the last 500 and it was that 100 meters between 500 meters to go 400 meters to go and 500 meters to go that actually did the damage 
I don't think anybody would have questioned the fact that he was going to win this race. And it was a brilliant piece of surging that did it. He was happy the way, the way the race was going. I don't think they really tested him. Remember on the lap of honor last year in Atlanta, when he had to stop at whereabouts, where, somewhere whereabouts he is now, because his feet were hurting so much. And he stood and tried to take his shoes off, and he almost toppled over, if you remember. But I don't think either the track or the canyons could damage his feet tonight. No, and that's right. And last year, Paul Turga tried to win the race from a long way out. I was surprised he didn't do something similar tonight. I don't think the result would have been any different, but I think that was the easiest ride that uh, Gabriel Silasi's had for a long time. World record earlier this year in Oslo, gold medal in Atlanta last season, gold medal again. Is, is this man beatable? Is there a way you can beat him? Well, I can't think of one. I'm pretty amazed at the number of Ethiopian supporters in the stadium. Flags everywhere. Words of advice from before his supporter lifted him. Be careful. Well, he's in the home straight once again. Well, I think he's more frightened this time in the home straight on the back of his mate than he was last time around. But the interesting thing was, though, the Ethiopian Federation were asked by the IAAF, please bring your best athletes to the World Championships, because there was an art, there was a discussion that went on that said that Gabriel Salati would not be here. Well, he came, and he certainly conquered. And I think that was the easiest race he's had for an awful long time. Highly Gabriel Salati, the champion again. Well, the champion in 93, 95 becomes the champion once again in 97. And uh, he's still a young man. He's only 24. Turgat takes the silver medal, as he did in the Olympic Games. Hisu, the former world record holder. Morocco in third place. Coex fourth. Mazigibu only 19 fifth. Castro, the first European from Portugal, is sixth. And another European, Ray of Spain, in eighth place. And 